Last time, I failed the synthesis of bromoethane and used up all of my precious hydrobromic acid. So I found another approach. I would call the previous one as the hydrobromic acid direct bromination method. And the method I will perform in this video is sodium bromide sulfuric acid bromination method. The biggest difference is we are making hydrobromic acid and brominate the alcohol at the same time. Technically, it's not happening at the same time, but you don't have to do the laborious fractional distillation of hydrobromic acid. So this method is much more efficient than hydrobromic acid approach. First, add 240 ml of water. I actually forgot to add additional 120 ml at that time, so I just directly add 120 ml of water in the addition funnel filled with about 40 ml of sulfuric acid, which is not recommended since putting water into the sulfuric acid will cause localized boiling, which will spit out sulfuric acid. But I'm adding water inside the addition funnel, so spitting doesn't matter that much, but I still don't recommend this kind of dangerous attempts. With strong stirring, add 120 grams of sodium bromide. Adding it all at once will create a big lump of solid sodium bromide that clumps up your server. So add it slowly. With the addition funnel attached and stopped or closed, I add 90 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid. I also put some ice bed to prevent excessive heating. It's really important to add it dropwise or you will just boil off all your hydrogen bromide. After all the addition, add one propanol into the addition funnel and add it dropwise. After all the addition, set up a reflux and the whole mixture is boiled for 2 hours. What we are doing in here is we are brominating the alcohol group or OH group of the one propanol. The reaction is shown above. I'm not a professional when it comes to the organic chemistry since I didn't go through proper organic chemistry lesson. So if there isn't any error, don't hesitate to criticize. First, under the strong acidic condition, the oxygen in alcohol group is protonated, which makes a really good living group, which is an H2O or water. And when the water leaves the carbon, the bromine ion acts as a nucleophile and attacks the carbon, substituting the alcohol group. For primary alcohols like 1-propanol that I'm reacting in this video, the SN2 or bimolecular nucleophilic substitution is dominant. This substitution happens simultaneously. On the other hand, SN1 reaction happens but it's less dominant than SN2. The reason being is that when the water leaves the carbon, it creates the carbocation. This carbocation is unstable and lacks to be attacked by the nucleophile as in this case, bromine ion. Before explaining what reason why SN2 is dominant in this alcohol, we need to look at the types of alcohol. There are four types, methyl, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Let's take tertiary alcohol for example. When the carbocation is formed, other carbons that are bonded directly to the carbocation can actually stabilize this plus charge. However, the primary alcohol, like 1-propanol, only have one carbon directly bonded to it. This one carbon chain is not that efficient at stabilizing carbocation. So primary carbocation tends to simultaneously react with nucleophile. This simultaneous reaction is SN2. Tertiary carbocation is stable, and it doesn't necessarily react with nucleophile simultaneously. So the nucleophile attack happens after the water leaves the carbon. To sum it up, the tendency to go through SN2 reaction increases when there is less substituent to the alcohol carbon. Ok, that's 2 hour. Remove the reflux condenser and set up a fractional distillation. 1-bromopropane boils at 71 degrees Celsius. 
So collect everything around that temperature. The distillant should have two separate layers. The lower layer is our target warm bromopropane. Actually, you will smell a lot of ether, and that is dipropy ether created by the heating of warm propaner under strong acidic condition of sulfuric acid. I don't really have to separate this thing because I'm going to use it for greener reaction. For the separation, add everything to separatory funnel and wash the flask with some water. 100 ml of water is added and shaken. You need to vent this thing frequently. I kept Lower layer is obtained. Again, add lower layer to the separatory funnel and add saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. This is also shaken and vented frequently. Obtain the lower layer. I didn't do it in here, but I recommend another washing step. So, to our crude one bromopropane, Add anhydrous magnesium sulfate that is dried in the oven. I'm going to use this for greener reagent and water removal is crucial since trace water remaining could ruin the whole greener reaction. I sealed it with some parafilm at the top and it was stored in the fridge. And in the boiling flask there was some brown liquid that seemed to be a bromine. I added sodium thiosulfate and reduced the bromine to less toxic bromine salts. This was all transferred to separate waste container. You should be responsible for your chemical that you created. <laughs>